In a joint statement issued at the end of their two-day meeting, ASEAN foreign ministers formally asked Myanmar's ruling military to free Aung San Suu Kyi. The move is unprecedented given the group's policy of non-interference in each other's internal affairs. But the Myanmar government says Suu Kyi won't be released until tensions subside between her National League for Democracy party and government supporters. It was on this street that a convoy led by Suu Kyi and her supporters was attacked, precipitating the violent clashes which followed. More than two weeks after the incident, people in the city of Moniwa, a town close to the violence, say the government's crackdown has succeeded in subduing opposition sympathizers. Government newscasts stream out daily propaganda against Suu Kyi. Foreign newspapers can be found here, but few are literate in English. Since many monks support Suu Kyi's opposition party, they've been targeted in government statements. Police and soldiers are visible throughout the town. Checkpoints have been set up, a curfew is in force after dark, and authorities have cut off most streetlights to discourage people from venturing out. It's now impossible to make an international phone call from Moniwa. Universities remain closed two weeks after they were due to start again. The government reportedly said the closures were due to the SARS virus. You know, the government, after the riot, Aung San Suu Kyi did them the government, the government announced to public the university has been shut down because of the SARS disease. <laughs> no. <laughs> but this latest crackdown in this remote part of northern Burma seems to have little to do with the virus that plagued much of Asia this spring.